victor has won And heaven has come And now you're taking us higher Welcome to Palm Sunday. Welcome. New Covenant Fellowship Church of Austin, where we are still here, equipping disciples to faithfully serve. We invite you, if you're online, to gather your elements for communion, and if you feel led, and you have a candle available, please take a candle and light the candle to invite the light of Christ, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, into your place of worship as we join together in worship. May God bless each and every one of you today as we begin to worship together as a family, as a community, in a body of believers. May grace, peace, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all today. As we center ourselves, let us rise in body and or in spirit as we are called to worship. With crowds from ancient times, we cry. Oh, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you in the house of the Lord. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Let us worship the living God. Amen. As we now recite our mission, 
here at New Covenant Fellowship. New Covenant Fellowship is a racially diverse community informed by the Bible, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and motivated to share God's love with all. In response to God's love, we are called to equip disciples to faithfully serve, to encourage seekers to joyfully commit, and to implore all to worship our Lord as we love our neighbors, grow in grace, and to live by faith. Please join us as we sing, Here I Am to Worship.
That was beautiful to hear everyone's voice, some louder than others. I don't know who it was, but it was good to hear everyone's voice. Let us, let us now confess our sins before God. Like Jerusalem, proud to profess our faith in moments of enthusiasm but yet deny our faith in moments of fear and stress. Merciful God, as we enter the school of the living of men, when we gather in prayer, we turn our hearts towards Jerusalem. We want to walk the way with Jesus, to be present each step from the Mount of Olives to the cross to the empty tomb, and yet we fall away. Forgive our stubborn resistance to Christ's work and witness. Fire us by your Spirit to follow in the way until we enter with Him. To the city of the not made by human hands, the new Jerusalem, the eternal in the heavens. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us take a moment to silently confess our sins. The one who rode into Jerusalem, the cheering crowds, knew that the cross awaited. In this way, we might know the great love of God for each and every one of us. Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, has defeated sin forever. Here and let you believe this good news. In Jesus Christ, we now are forgiven. Thank you, God. 
At this time, I invite you to rise to your feet, greet one another with a smile, and if you're eager to, a hug, and maybe even a kiss. <laughs> The peace of Christ be with you. Uh, All right, I got wet kisses. <laughs> peace of Christ. 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 Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. At this point in our service, we have a few announcements, uh, and these will also go out from our session, our clerk of session, so uh, be aware that this information will be communicated. But first, we have our session meeting. That's the most important thing. Our session meeting will be held on Wednesday, March 27th at 6 p.m. All are welcome to attend. This will be on Zoom, via Zoom. So feel free, all are welcome to attend uh, March 27th, 6 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, next, I would love to see everyone here and we're gonna have food, 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 like really good food. Let me ask, does anyone have an allergic reaction to like Papa Rose? <laughs> Seafood. Okay. We will have food, free food. What's the opposite of an allergic reaction? Uh, <laughs> where there's none left. <laughs> exactly. So on this Friday, on this Friday, March 29th at 6 p.m., we will have a wonderful performance for you. A wonderful performance. A wonderful performance for you a special event, the seven last sayings, seven last words of Christ on the cross. It will not be long, will not be long. We will be in and out really quickly. But I want to invite each and every one of you to come. Please tell a friend, please invite a friend. It is brief, probably 45 minutes. And then we have food and fellowship and love. This is our Good Friday service. Please come. Is it free parking? Free parking. Free parking. Free parking. And we will make sure to get everyone out. Yeah. And here, and here. It will be in here, and also we have a downstairs area as well that we'll be able to fellowship. Okay. Next, we have Earth Day. Earth Day at Mo Ranch. Oh, I'm sorry, Mo, not Mo Ranch. Please forgive me. John Knox Ranch. This is where we will come in. If you would like to, there's a sign up and you can kind of clean and clear out the trails and lay a little bit of the groundwork uh, prior to uh, the ranch opening up for summer camp. This is a really great opportunity for you if you like to swim and kind of canoe and kayak. I did it. I didn't fall out the canoe, some did. But it is a really good, fun opportunity just to get out. 
would advise you please have allergy medicine and an inhaler because the cedar and things like that can be high. Uh, so that's Earth Day. In May, May 1st, we will have at 7 o'clock a weekly Bible study. A weekly Bible study. Um, I will solicit and leave it open to where do we want to begin, whether it begins in Genesis, the Gospels, or Revelations. But we'll start with a weekly Bible study where we can come together and not be preached to, but this is an opportunity for us to dialogue together, for me to learn from you, for you to learn from me, from us to learn together and see what the Holy Spirit is giving us through insights of the scripture. Starting in May, weekly Bible study. Um, John Knox and Mo Ranch retreat registration is open. Scholarships are still available. Uh, point of contact for this is going to be Danita Nelson. Did we get it? We got it. I'll make sure to get it to you as well. Uh, point of contact is Danita Nelson. Please let us know. We want to gather our youth, harness our youth, so that way we can start to do some of these activities that the Presbyterian has available to us. And if assistance is needed, please let us know so that we can make sure that you get there. Please let us know. So we can make sure you get there. Um, beyond that, there are other ministry opportunities that will come forth and will follow uh, that will proceed, uh, flow out of the session. Outside of that, that should conclude our announcements. Uh, at this point, we're doing a little something a little different with this service, so I ask that you please bear with me. But at this time, let us offer prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we love a party. We love the floats and the bank. We love to wave at those passing by. We remember the joy of candy throwing to the crowd. And what could be better than balloons or hay to celebrate a victory? Joy. And yet we know too well that paradise can become moth. That celebrations or interrupted by gunshots. That shouts of joy are replaced by screams of terror. That cries of Hosanna, Hosanna, can turn into shouts of crucify, crucify. Oh Lord, oh Lord, we need you. Hear our prayers for those who Wait for the heroes and victors to arrive instead of joining the fight themselves. Hear our prayers for those who cannot lift their voice because life or health has worn them down. Hear our prayers for those who spoil the joys with their own agendas. Hear our prayers for those who feel a burden of expectations they cannot meet. Hear our prayers for those who just need a little peace and quiet. Hear our prayers for those who wonder why everyone else has not yet joined the March for Justice. Hear our prayers for those who have heard. Not yet. Wait a little longer. Hear our prayers for those who cannot face the cross. Hear our prayers for those who desperately need an empty tomb on Easter morning. Hear our prayers for us and all the things we care. Give us strength, courage, faith, and hope to follow Jesus this holy week. As we dine at tables, as we pray, as we walk, and even as we flee, remind us to remind us that your love never fails. Oh Lord, 
We need you. Until that day when we might know the joy. Amen.
Scripture reading. The Gospel of Mark. Chapter 11. Verses 1 through 11. Friends. Listen for God's word. I'll be reading from the DSV version. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethany, and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied. And some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing? Untying the colt. And they told them what Jesus had said. And they let him go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their coats on it and sat on it. And he sat on it. And many spread their coats on the road and other spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming king of our father David. Hosanna in the heights. And as he entered Jerusalem and went to the temple, and went in, and when he had looked, and when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Beloved, the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Let me offer a situation. The prophet Zechariah is quoted saying, your king comes to you riding on a donkey. Zechariah also prophesied, the Lord will stand at the Mount of Olives and split it in two, claiming universal kingship. I see three areas within this text that I'd like for us to explore today. I see the orders. I see obedience. And I see an ordinary man. Humility. I imagine seeing our Lord standing at the peak of the mountain of olives looking down on Gethsemane and seeing Calvary ahead. And below his feet, at the foot of the mountain, lies the temple. The time is near. There is no present time. The kingdom of God is at hand. Hosanna. Hosanna. 
Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the heart. But can I pause and ask a few questions? Why does Jesus decide to ride into Jerusalem on a baby colt? Why this way? Why does he invite a claim? Adoration. In the stronghold of his enemies. There are so many questions, yet I submit this story is of social political liberation. A political claim to liberation, freedom. In the same way Moses orchestrated the Passover, Jesus is orchestrating this revolution. When there is a revolution, we have two options. Peace war. Peace. War. We must choose peace because his actions demonstrated peace. Do we remember January 6, 2021? I'm not here to discuss politics, right wing, left wing, middle but do we remember January 6th? January 6th is the lens in which we see this text of social, political liberation, a revolution. When something has been revolutionized, it never returns back the same. This text is teaching the ways of peace because he is the prince of peace. As we think about Palm Sunday, this Sunday, the Sunday in which we stand right now or sit, the Sunday in which we are on Zoom, the Sunday in which we have gathered in community together, Palm Sunday. How brilliant. How bright, how breathtaking the days. They were then and even now. But even as bright as Palm Sunday is, there's the cast of the shadow of Good Friday. As bright as Palm Sunday is today, there's the cast of its shadow, Good Friday. I'm still hearing in my ears the crowd hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. That means save us now. Save us now. Save us, Yahshua. Save us, Jesus, now. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessing is the coming king, our father, David. Hosanna in the highest. What's so interesting about this text is, is one moment someone is with you hollering, Hosanna, save us now, praising you. Adoring you, but how fickle are we as people, as brothers, as sisters, as community members, as bodies and members of Christ? How fickle are we? We're so quick to turn on one another and let alone our Savior. It's superficial love. 
This superficial love that they have for Jesus, this superficial love they have for Yahshua, dangerous. I submit that superficial love is dangerous. In fact, it's deadly. And I caution us, beloved, that there are some, no, many, that only have followed Jesus for what they could receive. And I pause here parenthetically and ask you to reflect over your life of how many people have come into your life, have praised you, have lifted you up, or can I be real with you and gassed you up? Only to betray you. I'll stop for a moment because some of us have a few more years than those of us that are not. And there have been many, 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 many times in your life that someone has gassed you up, have praised you, only to betray you. But we do not serve a risen Lord that does not know and has not experienced everything that we have experienced. We do not serve a Savior that has not been tempted at all points as we have been tempted or we will be tempted. Jesus. Yahshua. Understand. Yet, they, we, I have to be honest with you, I have failed to realize <clears throat> to love is to suffer. To love is to suffer. Why do I say this? Because you cannot control that which you love. That which you love, if it's pure love, you have to let it be. I once heard, if you love something, let it go. If it returns back to you, it's true love. The background of this text, they brought the coat to Jesus. They threw their coats on it, and he sat on it. Can you imagine Jesus? I picture Jesus the way I stand, a six foot five man sitting on a young colt, feet dragging on the ground. And this is how our Lord and Savior comes. And many spread their coats on the road and others leafy branches that they had cut from the fields and those who went before him following and shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the coming king of our father David, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus is a walking dead man. Jesus is a walking dead man. Do you really believe the Roman government is going to allow Jesus to cause this uproar, this insurrection? Do you believe the powers that be, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, will allow their power to be stripped from them? Jesus is a walking dead man. I have to imagine that as he stood at the Mount of Olives looking at the cross before him, the church, his church, <clears throat> at his feet, as he entered into Jerusalem, Jesus was a walking dead man. Well, if you wonder why do I say that, not only did he arrive in a way that caused political and social unrest and turmoil, 
but he had just raised Lazarus from the dead. He sealed his sentence. When you know your time is near and every step you take is leading to pain and suffering, I can't fathom our Lord. This really causes me to pause and reflect on those sentenced to the death penalty. In the walk they take from their sail to their last breath. Right, wrong, and different, whether they did it or they did not, whether they deserved it or not, no matter what side of the coin you land, the walk from the sail to their last breath. You're walking dead. Martin Luther King Jr. was a walking dead man. I might get in trouble for this, but Malik El Shabazz, effectively known as Malcolm X. Peace be upon him, was a walking dead man. None of them were pure and without sin. Let any of us without sin cast the first. The price of social political liberation. Essay. Justice. Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther, theologian, writes, he sits upon a proud state, an animal of war, nor does he come in great prompt power, but sitting on a I've always wanted to say this word in church. Ass. An animal of peace. Fit only for burden and labor and help humanity. He indicates by this that he comes not to frighten humanity nor to drive and crush them but to help them, to uplift them, to help them carry their burdens. And for those of us who can't carry our burdens, and I'll stop here and tell you there's no better person for you to lay your burdens at his feet. He's a way maker. He's a provider. He's a bridge over troubled water. The old folks would say he's Emmanuel. He's God among us. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the face of grace itself. God is challenging the power structure through humility? Humility? I don't know about you, but I have to scratch my head on that. God is challenging the power structure through humility. Martin Luther further urges us to see this story as one of pain. Pain. The substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Humility. Humility. Something so simple, but yet so powerful. Humility. He who 
believes in Christ must find riches in poverty. Mm. Honor in dishonor. Mm. Joy in sorrow. What? Life in death? Huh? And hold fast to them in faith which clings to the word and expect such things. Not my words. Blame Martin Luther. Jesus is ready. He knows the path he must take. He knows the pain he must endure. He knows here at the Mount of Olives, Judas, his brother, his friend, I'm sorry, his dog, his boy, is going to betray him. He's going to sell him out. He's going to hand him over for some money. But what's so ironic about this is I did a little digging that David, when he was running from his son Absalom, who also wanted to kill him, was in this same spot on the Mount of Olives. Hmm. Till our Lord came to save us now and gave the disciples the orders to receive a cult that was tied in the village. And they went away and found this cult tied to the door outside in the street and they untied it. What is the significance of this donkey? I would love to talk to this donkey. I would love to talk to this donkey. It got to carry our Lord. Is it because it has never been written before that he asked for this ceremonial? Could it be to elevate his status off the ground from ordinary travelers that come into Jerusalem on foot? Hmm. Maybe it symbolizes humility, lowliness, meekness. It's one thing to bear our burdens. I see. I see our Lord Jesus Christ orchestrating his divine plan and fulfilling his role as prophet, priest, and king. Solidify. And saying without saying, he is the Mashiach, the Messiah. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming king of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus was not detracted, nor did he deter from the praise and the cheers. Hosanna. He was obedient unto God. Jesus rides in, not inside an insurrection to stir up and gather weapons of war or mass destruction, but rather he came ordinary as a humble man. Mm. God, my brothers and my sisters, my beloved, God came this way. Humble, meek, and mild. God that owns the cattle of a thousand hills. God that owns everything, all in all. Nothing was created but by God. God came in the person of Jesus Christ humbly. Amen. Amen. I'm almost done. 
to invite peace, goodwill, and prosperity to all who are lowly, meek, and mild. The humble, the downtrodden, the deserted, the desperate, the poor. All this to invite social, political liberation and to disrupt, and to disrupt the powers that be. My brothers and my sisters, the time is near. There is no present time better than this. The kingdom of God is at hand. Hosanna. 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. 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 Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and At this time, let us affirm our faith by reciting the Confession of 1967. A life, death, and resurrection, and promise coming of Jesus Christ has set the pattern for the church's mission. His human life involves the church 
and the common life of all people. His service to men and to women commits the church to work for every form of human well-being. The suffering makes the church sensitive to all human suffering so that it sees the face of Christ in the faces of persons in every kind of need. His crucifixion exposes to the church God's judgment on the inhumanity that marks human relations and the awful consequences of the church's own complicity and injustice in the power of the risen Christ the hope of his coming. The church sees the promise of a God's renewal of human life, society, and of God's victory over all wrong. At this time, I invite you to feel free as you are led to bring your gifts, your treasures, and your talents to the storehouse. Why? That there may be meat, bread, life, substance in our house. At this time, Feel free as you are led to give as you are able. If you do not have anything to give but have the desire to give, God sees your heart. Feel free to touch the basket as it is plastered around and if it's nothing in there for you to give, know that by you touching the basket that God sees and God will bless you and pour into you abundantly. Feel free to give with one of the options that are listed here on the screen. And we want to thank those who have continued to support New Covenant Fellowship of Austin for allowing us to still be able to faithfully serve and equip disciples. Is it address still good? Thank you. We need to switch it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We need to adjust it. That address is yeah. transferred. I think Mel already forwarded it. Okay. We will correct it. Thank you, Brother Don. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. comes in the name of the Lord. We are truly grateful for the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ our Lord. Receive these gifts as a symbol of the dedication of our very selves to you, O oh God. Use our gifts, our treasures, our talents, and use us as a part of the inbreaking of your kingdom, which comes and is still coming into this world. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, this.
This is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and north and south to sit at the table of the kingdom of God. Our Lord invites all to come to this feast he has prepared. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Holy are you, and holy is your name, O God. Out of the depth of your limitless, limitless, wondrous glory, you brought forth light which no darkness can overcome. And through this glorious light, you call forth all things, the heavens and the earth, the dry land and teeming oceans, the mountains and valleys, the fish of the sea and birds of the air, plants and animals, the smallest of creatures and the largest too. Then you created us in your likeness. All creation reveals your glory. Sadly, we, the Imago Dei, forgetting we are not God, time and again turn from you to go our own way. Still, O oh God, you loved us. In the fullness of time, Jesus, God's beloved Son, was born of Mary. This boy child of Mary began, began, become man, chose to love God above all else, to live from the center of his own divine reality. That choice led him to enter Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, though he knew it was a dangerous thing to do. The people, thinking Jesus had come to set them free, laid their cloaks and palm branches before him. Five days later, many of these same people cried, Crucify him! Crucify him! Still Jesus loved them, saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Gracious and merciful God, may your spirit descend on us and these elements today to help us to live from the center of our divine reality. To help us make wise and life-giving choices. Our choices impact not only our lives, but the lives of so many others. Help us be faithful, to grow into Christ who came that we might live fully into and out of your divine love. Oh God, may this be so today and always. Amen. 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 On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you. Whenever you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Friends, dear friends, beloved of God, whenever we eat of this bread, this cup, we proclaim the Lord's saving death at Holy Cross. And all is prepared, and we are going to feast. So you're going to come down the center aisle, is that correct? Come down the center aisle. I'm going to invite Robert, and I'm going to invite Olympia to come forward. Yes, yes. <laughs> Robin, you serve the bread, please. Olympia, you serve the juice. If you're coming this way, Robin, you can help me. 
And then we would work and go and we go stand. The blood that Jesus shed for me Way back on Calvary The blood that gives me strength from death Today, it will never lose its power. It soothes my wounds and calms my fear. Spirit is alive. Spirit is moving. Just like the Spirit moved across the face of the waters at the beginning. Spirit is alive and moving across the face of the waters at the beginning. Felt it as you were coming forward. This is the joyful time of not only because we are taking. It is a joyful time in the life of this congregation. Shepherd Allen leading us. It is a joyful time being in this space. This is a joyful time being in the church because we are in the process of being transformed and we are being invited to go out into the world and be a part of God's transformation. Let us give thanks for this blessing of the Lord's love. Holy God, we have tasted the light of your love and seen the glory, seen your glory at this table. Now transform us to find your glory in everyone and everything. As we pray in the radiant, transformative light of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we'll ask that we pause the recording.